In the sacred circle of the twelve disciples, there is one who carries in his heart a dark secret. Judas Iscariot, the keeper of the group's money, would become a symbol of betrayal and inconsolable remorse. His journey from faithful disciple to traitor led history to a fateful turn, creating one of the most shocking and haunting stories in the New Testament. How could a close friend and disciple betray his beloved teacher for just 30 silver coins? Let's explore the complex motives, deep emotions and tragic end of Judas Iscariot, the man whose name has become a symbol of betrayal for thousands of years. Stay tuned to my channel so you don't miss any videos of interesting Bible stories. Don't forget to leave a comment and share your thoughts about Judas Iscariot below in the comments. Judas Iscariot's name is a reference to his hometown, possibly the village of Kirioth. Iscariot, which translates to people from Kirioth, is a small village located in the south of Judea. This name distinguishes him from Judas Thaddeus, another disciple of Jesus. However, for many of the latter, the name Judas became a symbol of betrayal and intrigue. Of the twelve disciples chosen by Jesus, John 6, 64, Judas Iscariot was initially like the others, following Jesus with zeal and hope. He was the keeper of the group's pocketbook, a seemingly simple task that put him in an important and responsible position. However, greed and discontent led him on a journey no one could have expected. The darkness of betrayal began to envelop as Judas reached out to the high priests and Jewish elders. They are seeking to capture Jesus without provoking a backlash from the crowd. In a murky room, Judas meets these people and asks bluntly, How much are you willing to give me if I hand you over to you? There was a brief silence. Then one of the chief priests replied, 30 silver coins. 30 silver coins a sum comparable to the price of a slave of the time. This amount was not much, but with greed overpowering his mind, Judas agreed, and from there began to look for opportunities to betray his master. But all biblical facts point to the fact that he never believed Jesus was Lord. He wasn't even convinced that Jesus was the Savior, as Judas understood it. Unlike other disciples who addressed Jesus as Lord, Judas never used this name for Jesus, instead addressing him as master, acknowledging that Jesus was like any other teacher. At the same time, the other disciples strongly proclaimed their faith and allegiance. John 6, 68, 11, 16. But Judas never did so and seems to have remained silent. The same truth applies to us. If we fail to recognize Jesus, as the embodiment of God, and that there is only one who offers forgiveness for our transgressions and the eternal life that comes with it, we will make countless other mistakes that stem from our mistake in acknowledging God. According to the Gospel of John, at a critical moment, Satan entered Judas, John 13, 27. At the dinner before Passover, when Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, he said, Not all of you are clean. Jesus knew that one of them would betray him. John 13, 2 says, It was dinner when the devil planted the idea of betraying Jesus in the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son. At mealtime, Jesus said, One of you will betray me. The disciples looked at each other in surprise and confusion. They took turns asking, Master, is that me? When it was Judas's turn, he asked the same question, trying to hide his anxiety. Master, is that me? Jesus looked Judas in the eyes, a look that was both sad and understanding, and said, It was I who spoke. John 13, 27 continues, 
When Judas had eaten the bread, Satan entered him. Jesus said to him, Go hurry up and do what you're going to do. After receiving the piece of cake, Judas immediately left the room, darkness enveloping him, not only outside, but also in his soul. After the feast, Jesus led the disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. The olive grove is quiet. The moonlight shining down illuminates each path. While the disciples slept, Jesus prayed, sweating like drops of blood to the ground, knowing that the hour of trial was approaching. Not long after, torches flashed in the distance. Judas led a procession of soldiers and men of priests into the garden. To identify Jesus, Judas chose a simple but haunting sign, a kiss. Judas walked up to Jesus, said, Greetings, Master, and kissed him. That treacherous kiss on Jesus' cheek was a sign for the soldiers to capture him. Jesus looked at Judas, his voice soft but heavy, Friend, do what you come to do. Immediately, the soldiers rushed in and captured Jesus. Upon seeing Jesus sentenced to death, Judas realized the terrible sin he had committed. Deep remorse filled his heart. He returned to the priests, his eyes filled with fear and remorse, saying, I have sinned of surrendering my innocence. But the priests coldly replied, What does that have to do with us? Ignore you. In desperation, Jesus threw silver coins on the temple floor the sound of metal ringing like death bells. He left the temple, his heart heavy with despair. Wandering the city, Judas finds a desolate place outside the city. There, in the shadow of an old tree, he hanged himself, ending his life in regret and tragedy. If God knew of Judas's betrayal, then did Judas have a choice and responsibility in that betrayal? It is difficult for many people to reconcile the view of free will, as most people understand it, with God's foreseeable future event, and this is largely because experience is limited to linear time. If they consider God to exist beyond time, since he created all things before time began, then we can understand that God sees every moment of time in the present. We experience linear time, we see time as a straight line, and we pass through one point and then another, remembering the past we've experienced, but not seeing the future we're heading towards. However, God, the eternal creator, created time, not in time or time limits, but beyond it. Time can be thought of, in relation to God, as a circle with God at the center and therefore equal at all times. Judas' death and his throwing of 30 silver coins into the temple fulfilled Old Testament prophecy. In Zechariah 11, 12, 13, God says, I said to them, if ye find it good, give me my wages otherwise. So they paid me 30 pieces of silver. Jehovah said to me, throw that money to the potters, the great money they intend to pay me. So I took 30 pieces of silver and threw them into Jehovah's house for the potter. This is also recalled in Matthew 27, 9, 10. Then the words of the prophet Jeremiah were fulfilled. They took 30 pieces of silver, which was the price of the one who was valued, and they bought a potter's land, as the Lord has commanded me. In any case, Judas had every right to make his choices, at least until the moment when Satan entered him, John 13, 27, and God's foreknowledge John 13, 10, 18, 21, could not possibly replace Judas' ability to make any choice. Rather, what Judas would ultimately choose, God saw as if it were the present observation, and Jesus made it clear that Judas was responsible for his choice and would be responsible for it. Verily, I tell you the truth, 
one of you will betray me, who sits down to eat with me, Mark 14, 18. Note that Jesus described Judas' participation as a betrayal, and of accountability for this betrayal, Jesus said. Woe to him who surrenders the Son of Man. It is better not to be born, Mark 14, 21. Satan also has a stake in this, as we see in John 13, 26, 27, and he will also be held accountable for his actions. As always, God, with his wisdom, can control Satan's rebellion for the good of mankind. Satan helped bring Jesus to the cross, and on the cross, sin and death were defeated. And now God's provision of salvation is provided free of charge to all who receive Jesus Christ as Savior. The story of Judas Iscariot is not only a story of betrayal, but also a reminder of the temptations of life, of greed and the consequences of losing trust. It also reminds us of forgiveness and hope, because even though Judas committed a heinous sin, Jesus loved him like everyone else. Reflect on this story and ask yourself, in our lives, have we, like Judas, been tempted by material things or power, forgotten our true values and loyalty to God? This is a wake-up call for us to always keep our faith, avoid temptation, and repent promptly if mistakes have been made. Through the story of Judas, we learn that, no matter how great our faults, God's love and forgiveness are available to those who sincerely repent and return to Him.